Hello, my name's Simon Crather, and we're in the MotoGP paddock, as you can see in the Suzuki garage, for this week's Tech Talk. And the subject of the Tech Talk is ergonomics. I didn't even know what that meant until uh, Jorge Lorenzo, 2018, made the word quite famous when he proved how important the small adjustments to rider position and supports is, you know, by winning. And so basically, ergonomics is rider positioning. And that's what we're going to speak about now. Um, and I just want to throw in there that ergonomics, rider positioning, is totally separate from geometry, you know, which we've spoken to before. So once the team have found the geometry that works, they don't have to change that to change rider position. So I'm going to run through a few of the things that is available to, to change rider positioning to help them get comfortable, which is what it's all about. So handlebars, for starters, we'll start with that. This, where the bar is welded on to the clamp, can be welded on forward, further forward, right up here, or further back like this, and also at different degrees, you know, different angles where it comes off to help, you know, change the position of your wrist with your hand. Um, then, when it's mounted, it can be mounted further forward or further back. Plus, it can be mounted lower on the fork or higher. I've even seen uh, Valentino's crew playing with spaces under here, so he can, um, at a hard braking circuit, or downhills and stuff, that he can run the handlebars a little bit higher, so you have a little bit more to push on on the brakes, you know? The handlebars are a bit higher. You don't feel like you're gonna go over the front. Less physical, which is the whole aim, is less physical. If the rider can um, use less energy, he can fight stronger after 45 minutes for the last laps, you know? So that's handlebars. Then if we move, the, probably the second thing the rider will feel as he gets on would be seat. And uh, you can see here, the seat rubber is made from um, basically the same material that's used on the deck of a jet ski or windsurfer, etc. So even in the water, even when it's wet, it's not slippery. If this seat is slippery, wet or dry, with this amount of horsepower, you slide back, you've got to use your arms more to hold yourself forward, which is more tiring. So they want grippy seat. The other thing that can hold them forward under acceleration is the seat pad at the back here. Um, they can, you know, riders run all different sizes depending on where they want the support. They even run a little hump at the back here to hold them forward at different, and they can still sit up on it on the straight. That's the thing. If that seat pad is too big, then the rider won't be able to move back enough and his elbows will be still here in front of his knee instead of well, outside his knee instead of in front there's not enough room and the problem there is if your elbows are sticking out down the straight 96 was the first time i got told a rough calculation the bottom of a coke can surface area i prefer beer so to me the bottom of a beer can surface area takes around one horsepower to push at 200 kilometers an hour. So every little bit you get tucked in means less horsepower used, faster you go. So, okay, right, then seat uh, thickness of, the, of this rubber pad. Really important as well. You can see how thin Juan Mears is, super thin. So you feel everything through your backside from that rear tire. That's the best connection you have to know what is going on at the rear tire, super important. My 50-year-old back with uh, two rods, six screws, and it does not like these thin pads anymore. Doing track days, I've got to run the standard seat, and then my my back can handle that um, really, like, you've got really hard suspension there. Solid seat, so thin foam, it's just constant jarring, but you have the best feel of the rear tyre. So I can't run these anymore, but super important. Then the other thing is when you're accelerating out of the turn, you're basically sitting... You know, your, your butt groove is right here. So you're on, sitting on this area. The bike's further up. When they're accelerating, this, how it's flared out helps, helps hold the rider forward and the, the grip on that seat helps hold the rider forward. Then I would say we'll move to the fuel tank. You can see that Joanne's got an extra uh, section on the back here to hold him back a little bit. The tank is super important. I've always loved using that tank. Um, basically, your, your inner side of your leg here is pushing on here as you're braking, and it takes some load off your arms because if you, 
under about 1G they pull under brakes. If you're doing that at the end of every straight over 40, 45 minutes, it's like holding a push-up, you know, for repeatedly. So the more you can help your arms using the fuel tank, the better, less energy you're going to use. But obviously the rider position is super important. Um, seat height, but also back and forward, because the rider is, it affects the center of gravity. I remember riding Suzuka 8R, for example, and trying someone else's bike, because you're a partner, you know, and realizing his thicker seat put me in a different position and the bike handles different because you've changed that center of gravity more than I expected. Um, so there's obviously a too high, too low. You're always trying to find that compromise. Let's continue talking about fuel tank. You can see how these pads here, the stickers here are grippy like, so they hold the rider's leg when the bike is leaned over. And that is super important because when you're leaned over in the turn, you're not really accelerating or braking. It's you're not holding the bike down with your arms because again, you don't want to. If you're gripping the like with a with a fear, like often happens early in the season or early in practices, you end up with arm pump. So you need to relax a little bit, put less effort into the bars, which is less into the front tire, less chance of it letting go, and you use your leg to hold yourself on and the bike down. So, you know, saving energy, holding the bike down with your leg. And so leather companies now are even putting some of the riders requesting grippy areas in here, plus grippy areas here to hold themselves on. Last thing you want is slippery tank or slippery seat. Then just moving forward here, you can spot here, um, Juan's got an area that his knee pushes on to help, this is not fixed obviously, um, to help support under brakes again to save energy. Um, now let's move forward to, no, then we're going to go down to foot pegs, be the next thing. You can see the rear foot pegs here, they're adjustable, you can, they have different ones here, so you can go forward, back, up, down, you know. Obviously if you go far, too far down, your boots are going to be on the ground, you're going to run out of ground clearance, you wear the boots out, you can't lean the bike over. So there's a limit, you can go down, there's got to be an area where you can have enough ground clearance to go fast, you know. But at the same time too far up and you're cramping the rider up basically your heel which would be about here gets close and closer to your bum when you're sitting off there and you get too cramped up if you get too cramped up you're not working efficiently you know so you get more tired you're not as good changing direction because foot pegs are super important in that moment of change direction but also i learned riding the 500 if basically exiting any turns second gear corners which are really probably the most common corner full throttle if i let my backside touch the seat at all so any weight on here so you're standing on your feet it looks like you're sitting but you're not as soon as i relax and put my backside on the seat the the front wheel would go brap you do a wheelie because the weight is higher and further back than the foot pegs then sorry about this mask then I learned to stand on the balls of your feet as an anti-wheelie. And obviously you need a lot of strength to do that, you know? And so they've obviously got to be in the right position, efficiency, strength. Uh, let's move forward now to, I would say the last thing to talk about is screen. Because to get that aerodynamic, good, you'd, you'd, you'd think you'd want a nice long screen all the way. But the problem is the rider has to get low. This is how low, his chin's in here but he also has to get forward to stop that wheelie. And when he changes direction under throttle forward, he's gonna scrape his face on here, so you can't come too far back. The screen works together with the helmet, which works together with the hump, the back of the rider, and to flow the air off the back of there. I, I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of an insight to ergonomics, and we'll see you next week at Aragon for the next Tech Talk.